All right, good afternoon to everyone. Naririnig niyo po ba ako? Yes, yes po. po. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Right. For today, I think this is our first meeting. And I think I'll just jump into this exercise tutorial. <clears throat> Right. As this course is modular, um, we will have at least one exercise per module, except for the third module. For the third module, we will have two exercises. But for now, uh, module one will just have one exercise, and that is hydrologic cycle. And part of and part of the yeah, and part of the requirements, or rather, part of this exercise, we will cover some topics like uh, recharge and watershed analysis. And to proceed the objective of this exercise, basically you have should be able to do a or rather compute a hydrologic budget for a watershed at the end of this exercise. And this exercise is actually worth 31 points. Right? And the problems are based on the textbook of uh Kresik. I think 2000, uh, rather the concepts are based on Kresik, but the problems are actually based on Rao 2016, <clears throat> right? Now let's talk about some concepts. When you're doing or analyzing a watershed, or rather when you're interested in studying groundwater, When you're interested in studying groundwater, you basically have to understand where exactly is the water going. Okay? And normally, you always, in a watershed system, you always start with the precipitation. Okay? And it will be converted into runoff or basically water or surface water. And part of it will inevitably end up in the soil, infiltrate down the soil, and some of the infiltrated water will eventually reach the groundwater. <clears throat> okay. Although you have to note that, infil that infiltration of water in the soil uh, can be quite limited. Okay. After a certain amount of precipitation, the soil eventually maxes, maxes out its capacity to store or transmit water in proportion of rainfall converted to runoff uh, increases. And you can observe this, of course, when you're when you are observing a prolonged rainfall. Probably the first few hours are, you might not see a lot of uh, surface runoff. Pero after, after a few hours, medyo magsisimula na magkaroon ng maraming surface water. And you can observe, uh, pwedeng ma-overwhelm na yung mga kanal. Okay. Uh, you can do this, especially kung nasa bundok ka. No? Um, you can observe yung time na nagsimula yung ulan and then yung time na nag-start ng bumaha no sa bundok okay. and this is just an illustration no kung paano nangyayari yung infiltration <clears throat> okay 
then just zoom out. Hmm. You have, a, you have an experimental infiltration experiment here for different painful intensities. And your x-axis is the time since the start of infiltration on a logarithmic scale. And on the y-axis, you have your infiltration rate in centimeters per second. And you can basically observe different, you can see here different uh, precipitation rates. All right. And after some period of time around at around the around the six hundred second mark for this infiltration rate, and around two thousand second mark for this infiltration rate, uh, they will start um diminishing, and they will go asymptotically to the point zero zero one infiltration rate. Okay, so kumbaga. They start out. They start out strong, but after a certain period of time, around six hundred to two thousand two thousand seconds, um, mga bagsak na infiltration rate mo no. Kung bagay na overwhelm na yung soil, okay. All right. Now let's talk about water balance. Right, it's basically it's a budget it's a budget system for water, okay? and we're just interested in the water that's going in and going out of a watershed. <clears throat> okay. So I assume you're already familiar with the concept of a watershed, no? So basically, it's a piece of land. No, that is bounded by topographic highs no, such that all the water that's falling on that watershed will end up in in one river system no laging laging meron kang area na may topographic high kunya they surrounded siya by mountains or hills and pag meron kang ulan okay pag may ulan ka lahat ng ulan na bumagsak sa watershed na yan will eventually converge to a uh, mainstream. No? Okay. And that stream will usually end up either on a sea or a body of water like a lake okay? or another uh, river. Okay? <clears throat> okay. So always uh, when you're doing hydrogeology, always think of your problem no as a as a problem of water going in and going out no always think about the greater context no kung may problem ka um always try to see uh what is the surrounding watershed of this uh area okay in that way you can easily visualize no yung yung galaw ng tubig no um you will uh, appreciate that later on in the future discussions. All right. For now, uh, let's start with uh, the first uh, first letter, P, precipitation. This is a rainfall. This is the only, usually this is the, your only source of water. Okay? That's going in of your watershed. And this uh, three terms, so, laging dapat magbabalance yan, no? Kung ano yung pumasok na tubig sa watershed mo, yun din yung lalabas. Okay? Uh, ang important assumption dito is you don't have water being destroyed no? or or created in any way. Okay? Laging kung ano yung pumasok, siya rin yung amount na lalabas sa watershed. And part, do, part na mga um, kumbaga part ng water na lumalabas sa watershed mo is your runoff or your surface water. Okay? This is basically the water that travels at the surface of the soil and they can eventually converge on streams or gullies and later on they can converge on a river and the river can eventually exit to a sea or a lake 
or another uh, uh, watershed. Alright. Sinan ba tayo? Alright. After runoff na let's talk about evapotranspiration. Usually, this is one of the largest source of water, less, water loss in a watershed. Okay? This can account for like 30% of the water loss. No? And this evapotranspiration would consist of uh, pure evaporation of water, especially when you have water on the surface. No, uh, evap evaporation is a function of surface area. No, mas mag pag mas marami kang tubig na nakakexpose sa uh, surface na no? walang cover, mas marami kang evaporation na magkua. Okay, in contrast, kung medyo Kung yung water is either in the underground or in the subsurface or may cover siya, uh, less likely na magkakaroon ka ng or more or less mamiminimize mo yung evaporation. The other component of evapotranspiration is your transpiration which is uh, basically from your contributed by your plants. So I think na-discuss na to dun sa lecture 1. Okay. And yeah, uh, the next parameter is your delta S or the groundwater storage. And this is what you are usually interested in if you're doing hydrogeology. So basically, this is the change in groundwater storage. This is sort of a uh, tiebreakers equation kasi kapag um, possible na Mara pag marami kang precipitation and konti lang yung runoff mo tsaka evapotranspiration, basically, yung number mo is sahabulin ng groundwater storage. No? Kung baga, pag may surplus ka na tubig, lagi siyang mapupunta sa groundwater storage. Okay? Ngayon naman, kung konti lang yung precipitation mo and marami kang runoff and marami kang evapotranspiration, posible na yung tubig na nagamit sa evapotranspiration or sa runoff ay pwedeng nagdodona ng tubig from the groundwater. Okay? So, sa isang watershed, may dynamic no, yung paggalaw ng tubig. No? Um, yung groundwater, pwede siyang mag-contribute sa uh, base flow ng river. Yung river, in turn, pwede rin siyang mag-cost or mag- mag-cause ng infiltration no, pabalik sa groundwater. Yung evapotranspiration, again, pwede rin siya mag-draw ng tubig from the groundwater kapag sobrang drought na. Okay, pag malala na yung drought sa area, pwede siyang mag- uh, sumapaw no, ng tubig from the groundwater. Okay? Alright? And you have this figure called, called the water balance plot. This is actually mo more used in agricultural and um, conservational purposes. No? And you have uh, three lines here. You have your precipitation, the square ones. Okay. You also have your potential evapotranspiration, the circle ones, and you have your triangle, the eva actual evapotranspiration. All right, uh, let's just clarify this one. Uh, your precipitation, major obvious, no? It's just the 
amount of rainfall no as usually expressed in depth no like inches or millimeters potential evapotranspiration basically is is sort of a theoretical number hindi pala sort of it's a theoretical number it's a theoretical number that is linked to the uh, temperature it's purely a function of temperature, yung potential evapotranspiration. Now, as I've discussed earlier, evaporation you know, is a function of surface area as well. Kapag mainit, no, pag mainit yung panahon, pero wala ka namang water na nasa surface, uh, magkakaroon ka pa rin ng evapotranspiration, of course, kasi pwedeng mag-dry out yung soil. Pero more or less, minimal lang siya. As opposed to, for example, nasa gitna ka ng ocean and mainit yung panahon, the whole ocean is just water. Okay? And you have like 100% of the surface area no, exposed to the atmosphere and you can get like uh, full evaporation. Alright? So... Just to visualize, no? kunyari pag nasa gitna ka ng dagat, you have like 100% surface area covered in water. And you can easily get 100%. You can easily max out your potential evapotranspiration. Kumbaga, kunyari sa ocean or sa irrigated land no, na maraming surface water, pwedeng mag-equal lang yung potential and actual. No? Kasi marami kang water na exposed sa surface. Uh, may mga cases naman na uh, kunyari marami kang vegetation, vegetative, vegetative, vegetation cover, sorry. Or marami kang water no, na nasa subsurface. Doon naman pwedeng hindi mo mamamax out yung potential evapotranspiration. Sorry. Pwedeng minimal lang yung actual mo. Kahit na, kahit na mataas yung potential mo, pwedeng mababa yung actual evapotranspiration kasi wala ka naman masyadong tubig na exposed. Alright? So, laging yung actual tsaka potential, pwede silang mag-equal, no? Pero laging yung actual, never siyang sasagad ng potential evapotranspiration. Kung bagay yung potential mo, yun yung maximum. Okay? All right, uh, let's just look at this chart. No? Um, when you have, you can look at this as square one. Ito yung precipitation. No? For the months of January to May, you can see that you have precipitation. Pero, mas mataas yung actual evapotranspiration mo kaysa sa precipitation. Okay? In that case, Alarming yan, no? Kasi, kumbaga yung precipitation lang naman yung source of water mo for the watershed. And, yung outlet ng tubig mo sa watershed, hindi lang naman evapotranspiration yan, di ba? Meron kang runoff, meron kang, meron ka change in groundwater. So, pag meron kang evapotranspiration na mas mataas pa sa precipitation mo, ibig sabihin yan, Ibig sabihin niyan is saan ka kukuha ng tubig, no? Kahit na i-rule out natin to, no? I-rule out natin itong runoff. Kung meron kang precipitation pero mas 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 mataas pa tong evapotranspiration, saan ka pa kukuha ng tubig? Okay? So, ang pagkukuha naman na lang ng tubig, hindi ka naman pwedeng kumuha ng tubig sa runoff kasi wala namang runoff na negative, no? ang runoff laging pababa yung daloy niyan. Wala namang runoff na umaakit ng packet ng gravity ng watershed, no. So, ang pwede mo na lang pagkunan diyan actually is your groundwater storage. Okay? So, pag meron kang mataas na evapotranspiration rate na higit pa sa precipitation, ang nangyayari diyan is actually nagda-dry out na yung soil. And pag nagda-dry out yung soil, <clears throat> 
um, meron ka rin capillary force no, na maghahatak sa groundwater na umakit din and sila din yung magda-dry out. No? So, yan yung nangyayari no, pag meron kang drought or mga dry periods. No? And it's it's a real thing. No? Um, when I was studying in New Zealand, meron ako mga African classmates no? and they're talking about droughts. And it's really devastating, no? It can take like a year, no? Walang tubig. And basically, you have like thousands of people dying a slow death, no? Kasi walang tubig, walang pagkain. And it's either you just commit suicide at that point or you just uh, exhaust all means to get, get out of your country. Right? So, yeah, this part here is actually a drought period, no? May doubt na dito kasi mas maraming evapotranspiration kaysa sa water na pumapasok sa watershed. And this area here is what we call soil moisture utilization. Kasi nga, uh, when you have more, you're basically uh, drying out the soil. No? So at that point, na-utilize na ng evaporation or evapotranspiration yung moisture mo sa soil. And in the perspective of agriculture or, or environmental uh, conservation, uh, masama yun sa vegetation. No? Magkakamatayin yung mga vegetation mo kasi tuyo na yung soil. <clears throat> right? We also have another line here. Uh, this is circular line is your potential evapotranspiration. Alright? Again, you can see that it is higher than your actual evapotranspiration. Okay? So, anong ibig sabihin naman ito? No? Pag meron mas mataas yung potential evapotranspiration kaysa actual evapotranspiration. Ang ibig sabihin niyan is, again, limited yung water na pwedeng mag-evaporate. Okay? So, which is, which is quite logical kasi if you look at this part, no, you can see na mababa na yung rainfall, mataas na rin yung, evapor yung actual evaporation. So, ibig sabihin niya, yung soil is already dry, no? And most likely, wala ka na rin talagang water sa, sa surface, no? Wala ka ng mga ponds or puddles or um, fish ponds. Most likely, natuyo na sila. Though, the thing here with potential evapotranspiration is Malaki pa yung potential no for evap for evap evapotranspiration. Ang ibig sabihin nitong malaking gap na to is pag nagdagdag ka pa ng uh, surface water sa system mo, kunyari nag-irrigate ka or nagdilig ka ng halaman sa ganitong panahon, ano mangyayari? Siguro if you tried uh, sa summer no pag sa tagtuyot or summer try mong magdilig ng ng halaman sa tanghaling tapat. Uh, just probably just a few minutes after pouring out some water, magda-dry agad yung soil. And the reason for that is sobrang taas ng temperature. Mataas yung temperature, so mataas yung potential evapotranspiration. And once your water hits the surface, um, ano siya, um, it's subject to, evapor to evaporation agad, no? The moment the water hits the surface, uh, subject na agad siya to, evap to evaporation. Alright, so in this case, no, if you're doing some agricultural activities and you try to irrigate the soil, you will encounter problems kasi sobrang taas pa rin ng potential evapotranspiration. So marami kang tubig na masasayang no trying to irrigate this kind of uh, in this kind of condition. So pag dilig mo, maraming tubig na mamawala lang din due to potential evapotranspiration kasi sobrang init ng panahon. Right? So yan yung tinatawag nating itong gap na to, uh, this gap between the potential and actual is what we call water deficiency. Now let's move on to the June to October period. <clears throat> In here, we actually have more precipitation than potential ev evapotranspiration. Okay? And in this case, as you can visualize, 
Marami kang tubig, no? So, basically, yung at this point, no, medyo basa yung lupa. Kasi maulan nga, di ba? Marami kang water surplus. So, basa yung lupa sa surface. And you can see here, no, na yung potential evapotranspiration and actual ay nag-merge na lang sa isang line. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Sa panahon na to, since marami kang tubig, <clears throat> Marami ka rin water sa surface and basically sa dami ng tubig mo um, sobrang efficient ng evapotranspiration mo. No? Kasi yung buong, most likely yung buong surface ng land uh, may tubig. No? Okay. Alright, so that's basically just how you can uh, interpret uh, this water balance uh, chart. Uh, <clears throat> Uh yeah. So these are just the uh definitions of the concepts I discussed. No, these are just the formal definitions. But more or less, I hope you under already understand the conceptual uh or rather the functions of these um parameters. Right. For the problem for this exercise, you have your this data given in millimeters, <clears throat> and you have a monthly, a monthly data containing precipitation, potential evapotranspiration, and actual evapotranspiration. All you have to do is just plot all these uh, figures. Uh, actually, you have to create columns no, for soil moisture utilization, water deficit, and water surplus, and calculate uh, these parameters. Okay. Um, part two is you have to plot the precipitation, the potential evapotranspiration, and the actual evapotranspiration from the given data in the graph. So, hindi, hindi nyo na kailangan i-plot yung SMU, WD, tsaka WS. Okay. And then after that, just uh, identify or label the plot of the areas. Ng... So, identify nyo lang, alin dyan yung soil moisture utilization, alin dyan yung water deficit, tsaka alin dyan yung water surplus. And then we have this follow-up question here in the data. Kapag yung precipitation ay mas mataas sa potential evapotranspiration, magkalapit daw si actual at si potential evapotranspiration. Bakit? Okay. So, bakit? So, na, I think na-discuss ko na yan kanina. Kung nakikinig kayo, two points na agad. And then, for question number four, you have a scenario. Meron kang scenario na month A na dry season na uh, konting ulan. Pero meron kang typhoon. And then yung scenario B, meron kang wet season na continuous yung rainfall. So tingin nyo, alin dyan yung buwan na magkakaroon ng maximum potential evapotranspiration? Yung month A ba o month B? Bakit? Okay. So sa tanong na to, just keep in mind yung potential evapotranspiration, nagma-max out lang yan kapag yung ulan, yung surface mo is laging may tubig. Okay? It's not about, about the amount of water, but it's about uh, the land area being continuously covered by water. And question number five, do you think it's, it's inefficient to provide irrigation during months of high water deficit? Why? So this is not a moral question no kasi may na-encounter ako medyo morally uh, questions. No? Of course, kapag drought no, of course you have you probably still have to to plant crops no kasi mamuguhutom yung tao. Pero in a purely subjective uh, perspective no, objectively tingin nyo ba efficient sa what inefficient in terms of water usage na mag-irrigate kapag drought. 
Tingin nyo, ano ba nangyari kapag drought, tapos nagdilig ka? Ano nangyari sa tubig? Lahat ba yun napupunta sa soil o napupunta sa sa ibang process? And then, then just answer, no? Is it efficient, no? In terms of water resources or not? Okay? All right. That is uh, part. That's the first part of your exercise. Now let's move to the second part. Ito. Second part is about runoff. <clears throat> and <clears throat> right, and in here, uh, I'm presenting you a I'm presenting you a formula on how to calculate or estimate runoff. Okay. And I'm introducing here uh, Barlow's formula, 1915. It's quite an old uh, formula. But it's a really, really simple formula and a probably a very powerful one. You can basically estimate no your runoff no or how much water how much runoff will you, will you get from a given precipitation by basically multiplying your rainfall in millimeters by a runoff coefficient. Okay, and the runoff coefficient will depend on the type of land use and the degree of vegetation. So you have class A. I think black cotton soil is peat. No, yun yung peat uh, organic soils. No, yung black cotton soil. It's a British term for uh, peat organic soils. So it has. So it's a very very water loving type of soil. No, and it has consequently it has a very low run of coefficient. Kasi matayam siyang tinatarap na soil. Uh, peat. or black cotton soils uh, can absorb a lot of water. Uh, class B is cultivated soil, uh, probably your rice fields, and so class C is your average catchment. No, not sure what that means, but as you go to sure you just use the average. Class D is hills and plains with little cultivation. Okay, probably yung mga foothills. And class E is very highly and steep. Very highly and steep? Very highly vegetated and steep uh, land with hardly any cultivation. Okay, so basically yung mga bundok. Alright? <clears throat> and sagot natin nandun sa taas. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Problem here is quite simple, no? You just have to calculate given a rainfall of 100 millimeters and given this three conditions, uh, just calculate the estimated runoff. Okay? Rice fields, uh, plantation, mountain area. Okay, so pansinin nyo, hindi siya sak sumasakto sa mga categories dito. No? So, I leave the judgment to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's it. Uh, next problem is watershed analysis. Ito medyo mas matugo. Uh, pero... Kukwento ko lang no, kung ba't tayo nag-groundwater budget and ba't tayo nag-watershed analysis. Groundwater is, um, gaya ng sabi ng isang prof na nakita ko dati, 
when you're studying hydrogeology or you're studying water, um, ipikit nyo daw yung mata nyo, no? So, close your eyes. And, ano nakikita nyo pag nakapikit yung mata nyo? Wala, di ba? Ganun din sa hydrogeology. Wala ka nakikita at all kasi lahat ng tubig nasa ilalim. So, ganun kahirap, no? Mag-hydrogeology kasi lahat ng data mo ay hindi mo nakikita. Lahat sila nasa subsurface. Nakarely ka actually sa water well data sa well data lagi. Or minsan may geophysics pero more or less laging ang pinaka reliable means to study groundwater is always a uh, pumping test na taken from uh, water drilling. So bakit tayo nag watershed analysis? Uh, this is done because yun ya Mahirap mag-obtain ng drilling data, ng water well data. And sa preliminary stages ng pag-aaral mo when you're looking for groundwater or you're trying to uh, study groundwater so you can conserve it, you have to understand or at least estimate no yung groundwater recharge sa isang watershed. No? Kasi yung watershed is basically yung domain, no? Yun yung yun yung parang pinaka context ng ng isang area, okay? Ko ano yung nangyayari sa watershed na yun, most likely yun na rin yung parang governing condition mo for that specific area. Now, uh, mahirap malaman yung actual groundwater recharge, no? So it's groundwater recharge is important kasi when you're uh, drawing water or you're extracting water from the subsurface, you have to make sure that you're not taking more water than is re- than what is being recharged naturally. Okay? So, hindi mo dapat may higitan yung groundwater recharge. Otherwise, pag nahigitan mo yun, you can see the consequences here dito sa chart na to, di ba? When you're extracting out water, uh by a lot no you can easily disrupt the balance of the soil and you can actually lower the quality of the soil in a given area when you're extracting too much water uh also not to mention the other consequences of growing too much water uh, pwede ka rin ng um hydrocompaction ng soils or basically subsidence no um kumbaga pinigamo yung tubig sa soil so babagsak siya and it can result in on damages to nearby uh, houses and structures right so bottom line ayo nating abusuhin no yung groundwater recharge and para malaman natin kung hindi ba natin naabuso yung groundwater resources kailangan nating malaman kung gaano karami ba yung actual recharge na nangyayari and Yun yan, mahirap malaman yung actual recharge pero madaling malaman yung ibang processes no na nakalink sa groundwater recharge. So by the process of elimination, ito mahirap to malaman tong changes in groundwater. Pero yung precipitation, madaling malaman yan. No? You can just get precipitation data from rain gauges, from pag-asa or from agricultural colleges. It's very easy to monitor and measure. Runoff is also easy to monitor and measure. You can put uh, flow gauges in rivers, uh, flood stage, uh, flood gauges, or you can just use Barlow's equation to estimate the runoff. Evaporation, evapotranspiration, again, madali lang yan. No? You just put in some evaporation pans. No? Uh, you just Basically, put in some weather instruments. Uh, basically, evaporation evaporation pan is just a kal para sa kaldero na may tubig. Iyon mo lang siya ng maghapon or twenty four hours, whatever. And then you just measure kung gaano karaming tubig yung nabawas no for that period, and you can easily eva- estimate the amount of evaporation. And then you can just apply some correction factors para maging evapotranspiration na siya. So, madaling malaman tong tatlong parameter na to. Mahirap is yung groundwater change. 
So, yun nga. Um, since ito yung kailangan natin, we can just basically measure all of all these uh, three three parameters and solve for uh, the groundwater storage number. And yun yung gagawin natin sa watershed analysis. Right? For the watershed analysis, we have a tutorial. No? Mayroon tayong sample problem. It's a the name of the basin is Kalayaan Watershed. It has a, an area of 100 square kilometers. Average precipitation from June for the month of June is 20 millimeters per day of precipitation. No? Interpolated from the from different rain gauges. Average evaporation rate of five millimeters, and then you have an evapotranspiration coefficient of one. Kindly note that evaporation and evapotranspiration are not the same. Okay, that's why we have to apply a a sort of a coefficient or a correction factor for evaporation data. Okay. And this coefficient is discussed in detail in this article. And it's quite complicated to be honest. No? So I'm, not, I'm just leaving that link. No? And another data is the runoff for the main river of the catch basin. So yung main river mo is yung sumasa nun lang lahat ng tubig no? from the watershed including runoff. Although, minsan may parts na kasamang groundwater-based flow. Pero more or less, yung main river mo na, basically yung representative ng lahat ng tubig na palabas sa watershed mo in form of a surface runoff. Okay? So, their data here is 10 cubic meters per second no? based on the flow meter. Now, the problem is you have to calculate Groundwater storage. And here's your solution. You can calculate, you can use this uh, water budget equation. And all right, so let's try to more or less uh, standardize all the data in the same unit of measurement para ma-manipulate natin sa, uh, siya. So we can all convert them into cubic meters per month no? para more or less uh, standard siya. Let's start with the total precipitation volume. And we can calculate that by multiplying the depth of the precipitation per day, which is 20 millimeters per day, by the area of the watershed, which is 100 square kilometers, by the period of time, which is 30 days. And of course, you have to convert all, all of these into appropriate units of measure. And you will end up with 0 0.02 meters per day times 30 days times 100 million cubic, uh, sorry, 100 million square meters. And you will end up with uh, 60 million cubic meters of, of precipitation per month. Okay, so I think for the runoff, um, you basically just have to multiply the discharge by 30 days. Discharge, uh, I hope you're familiar with this term. Discharge is basically flow volume per, per, per unit of time. Okay. Discharge is 10 cubic meters per second. Okay. And we can convert that by basically. I don't like jumping solution go. Yeah, we can basically convert that into month. Okay.
Na ah, okay okay. Medyo na medyo na lito ko din. Eh. What you can do here is first uh leave the discharge data alone no. So pabayaan mo na siya. We first convert the 30 days into seconds. So 30 days times 24 hours per day times 60 minutes per hour times 60 seconds per minute you will get 2.5 million seconds. Now, kapag minultiply mo si discharge no by the by seconds, you can you will eventually just cancel out. You will eventually just cancel out your seconds uh unit no kasi So magka-cancel out tong seconds no kasi numerator denominator and you will end up with 225.92 million cubic meters of water pero since yun yung data mo for the whole month of June you can put month here no pwede mo idagdag tong per month now for the For the evapotranspiration for June, you just have to multiply your evaporation data by the evaporation evapotranspiration coefficient. Multiply it by the number of days times the, the catchment area. And you will get uh, 5 millimeters per day times coefficient of 1 times 30 days times 100 square kilometers and you will end up with 15 million cubic meters of water per month. Okay? And since isang unit of measure na lang silang tatlo, we can already solve for uh, change in groundwater. Right? We can just rearrange this equation to solve for delta S or solve for the change in uh, groundwater storage. And groundwater storage is just precipitation minus runoff minus evapotranspiration. And that's just 60 minus 25.92 minus 15. And you get a positive value of 19 million cubic meters net, net storage of groundwater for the month of June for that given watershed. So note na positive value siya. No? Kapag negative yan, ibig sabihin... Negative yung storage, meaning palabas yung tubig, no? lumalabas siya ng uh, groundwater. Pag positive, ibig sabihin papasok, papasok yung tubig sa groundwater. Alright, and for our problem, we have a very, very similar problem. Okay. Pero just a reminder, no, dito sa problem na to, January has 31 days, no? Yung kanina kasi June has 30 days. So you have to account for that. And you also have a different evapotranspiration coefficient. You have 0.75. Okay. Alright. So that's the tutorial for today. Uh, so far, do you have any questions? All right, if you don't have any questions, uh, you can probably still ask no sa Blackboard. You can either message in Blackboard for questions. <clears throat> yeah. So that's basically just our session for for this week, no. I have no other stuff to discuss for now. So if you don't have any uh, uh any any question, uh that concludes our session for today uh thank you for participating okay so i also upload this a copy of this uh lecture recording okay upload ko na lang sa blackboard then all right so yeah thank you for participating okay and have a happy weekend thank you po sir all right thank you, thank thank you. you. welcome thank you po sir thank you po sir Bye. Nice. Uh, welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, then.
Oh. Oh, good night.